Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Sky CPX2 RD. Are you ready? Stand by. mythology, Prometheus was the character that brought the fires down from the heavens and gave them to the regular people. Now, in the Red Dot game, it has been cost prohibitive. It's about $600 for an optic-ready pistol or $500 for a standard service pistol plus $100 in milling. An electronic sight's going to set you back another $300 to on up to $600. And if you get co-witness iron sights, that's another $100 in the mix. And for this reason, a lot of people have said that electronic sites are never really going to penetrate the mainstream American market, even though they were gaining traction in the Leo set. And then, just like Prometheus, Sky Pistols has brought the fire of the electronic site game down to the people at an MSRP below $350 for a pistol that comes mounted with a sight from the factory. So if you're not familiar with the Sky CPX line of pistols, there are two major varieties, the CPX-1 and the CPX-2. This is a CPX-2 because it does not have a manual safety. There's also no trigger safeties because the action is an internal hammer double action only trigger. It's roughly the size of a Glock 26 if you had a flush base plate or with the extension it becomes closer in feel to almost like a Glock 19. The magazines are steel and a 10 plus 1 capacity that you can buy directly from Sky for 21 or 24 bucks. Similar to the P320, this gun features an aluminum chassis inside of a plastic grip module, so you can buy additional grip modules in any color your heart desires directly from Sky. The barrel is a 3.1 inch stainless steel conventionally rifled barrel living inside a slide that has pretty clean machining with a tri-top cut on the top and a couple of large cocking serrations at the rear. Most importantly, the electronic sight is sunk down into the top of the side, so the sight channel on the electronic sight actually co-witnesses with the standard front sight. The weight is very appropriate for concealed carry at about 17 and a half ounces, and the thickness is appropriately slim at about one inch. All of the controls are on the left side of the pistol, so you lefties unfortunately don't have access to ambidextrous controls. Yes, I said it that way on purpose. And as I briefly touched on, the segment that this pistol is aimed at is the civilian consumer type of market, and the mission of the gun is more of a concealed carry or potentially home defense gun. And the star of the show is the electronic sight, the Crimson Trace CTS 1500, which is about a 3.5 MOA dot. Well, we'll get into that later. Now getting into the review, the shooting experience of the Sky CPX 2 RD is about what you would expect for any lightweight concealed carry type gun with a short barrel, which is to say the recoil impulse is very violent, sudden, and loud. And that is not a knock against this pistol in any way. Any three inch gun is going to share all of those features. Now, because the grip is so long and spreads the weight out in the palm of your hand, it actually is somewhat pleasant to shoot for a gun of this size. Now, with the pinky extension on the gun, I'm able to get all of my fingers on the gun. However, I would pinch my hand if I tried to do emergency reloads on the clock. The texturing of the grip is somewhat smooth. There is some texture there, but it's not going to rub against your skin or tear up your shirt or anything like that. They claim that there is a recoil cushion built into the back strap of the gun. I have no way of testing that and knowing if it actually works or not. I think the theory is that the cutouts at the back of the back strap allow the grip to compress into your hand and bleed off some of the energy of recoil into the grip itself as the plastic deforms. I'm not real sure. There are no notable ridges or high spots on the grip that feel like they rub and uh, it allows you excellent purchase getting up behind the gun. You can get a firing grip very comfortably on this. So the gun is comfortable in the hand, but the I wouldn't necessarily think of the word like ergonomic, like a sculpted grip or anything like that. It is, it is significantly more comfortable than something like a Glock or something like that, which just feels like a 2x4, but it doesn't take it to the next level like the H&Ks or the M&P type pistols as far as just 
melting into your hand. Now the accuracy of this pistol was surprising to me because this is a very accurate gun. When I was zeroing the electronic sight, I was amazed at the size of the groups that I was putting out at 10 yards that first day. Traditionally, a gun of this size or stature you would assume to be kind of a belly gun or something useful out to 10 yards and in. But based on the sizes of the groups, you really can stretch it out. And speaking to that, when I backed it up to 25 yards and ran the plate rack, I went six for eight, which is fantastic for a gun this size. Backed it up to 50 yards and I could go about 50% of the time with all of the misses being very, very near misses. And I would honestly chalk that up to my double action trigger pull is a bit rusty. I would need more time to kind of master the trigger and get that hit rate up, but I have every confidence that I could do it. The gun absolutely is doing its part. And that's gonna bring us to the trigger. Now, as I've mentioned, this is an internal hammer fire double action only gun, which makes the trigger very revolver-like. A double action only revolver trigger would be very similar to the trigger found in this gun and the trigger pull is heavy and long at about nine pounds. However, it is very smooth and predictable, and it is very easy to pull through, and once you spend time with the pistol, I think you'll be able to pull it straight to the rear. The trigger quality is decent. On my Lyman scale, it was pulling right at nine pounds, which for double action is kind of middle of the pack. It's not super heavy, it's not super light. It's kind of right where you'd want it to be where it's still kind of safe. So for a pistol that doesn't have any trigger safeties or anything like that, that is a very safe weight. Now, just like other double action only triggers, the reset is very long, meaning that you pull the trigger and you have to let it all the way out. Come all the way out the trigger and you can go again. There is no writing the reset or anything. It's just going to be all the way in and all the way out. And as I mentioned, if you want a manual safety, they have the CPX-1 RD available as well. And part of the reason this gun is so accurate is because of the electronic sight, the Crimson Trace CTS-1500. Now, if you go to Google, you're not gonna be able to find this sight, and the information I'm able to find on it is somewhat varied. So I'm gonna just tell you what I know about it. Now, this sight does have a rear sight channel milled into the body of it. So, and it does co-witness and have a true point of impact with the front sight, which is a premium feature on any dot gun. Now the CTS 1500 is kind of like the shield sight in so much as that it auto adjusts to the ambient lighting. And as a result of that, you don't get to dial in the brightness you want, which is fine if you're indoors. It actually does a good job of adjusting to the different ambient lighting conditions in low and medium light environments. But when I took it out to the range, in the full midday sun, it kind of washes out a little bit, so you're actually going to welcome the front and rear sights, at least while you're learning how to index the red dot correctly. The windage and elevation adjustments are accomplished via a provided hex key, which isn't my favorite. I prefer a flat head or potentially something I could do with a case rim, but for a small sight such as this, I understand why it is that but there are no tactile clicks when adjusting. So you're kind of left on your own to just kind of eyeball how much of a quarter circle of a turn you want to put into the thing, which for me led to me using more ammo than I typically require to get it zeroed. And since there is no tactile click, this may not be the case, but in my mind, there's nothing holding it in that position. Now, I didn't have an issue with zero shifting in about 300 rounds I put through this gun kind of testing it out, but it does leave the question in my mind as to whether it will hold zero over thousands of rounds of use. So I didn't do any Aaron Cowan Sage Dynamics fence post punching with this optic. However, I did, was not shy about using the sight as a slide racker, and I didn't have any issues with zero shift or anything like that. So the sight is usable. I would prefer if it was manually adjustable, and perhaps it will be in future models. And kind of my last gripe about it is that the battery mounts on the bottom of the sight, so you have to actually remove the sight to change the battery out. But you're not going to have to do that much because it boasts a 20,000 hour battery life. And since it is an auto adjusting site and it's going to be living in either a dark holster or a dark safe most of the time, and they provide you an optics cover that actually dials the site down to next to nothing, you're probably not ever going to have to change the battery on it if you get really honest about it. All of that said, I would absolutely prefer a sight like this over something like Night Sight. So the sight window itself is a little bit smaller than an RMR, probably in line with like a Romeo Zero or a Shield Sight. In the dot itself, the book that came with it says it's a 5 MOA. Sky's website says it's a 3.5 MOA. 
Just looking at it, it looks smaller than a 3 MOA. I'm guessing it's a 2 MOA. I have no idea. As far as concealment is concerned, this gun fits in the Harry's holster, Glock 48 holster that I use for my typical everyday carry gun and worked well enough for range use. Harry was also very interested in this pistol. He will be releasing a holster at probably the end of February. So if you're watching this, you can check out his website closer to the end of February. I've got a code that'll save you 10% in the description. But as far as concealment is concerned, no, I didn't have any issues with the gun concealing. It concealed as well as my Glock 48. Now, reliability was actually not a problem. I did not clean this gun when I received it. I kept whatever packing grease and lubrication was in. One thing that I will note about this pistol is the recoil spring is not far oversprung like many of the current service pistols. So as the gun started to get dirtier, I noticed the slide was starting to slow down. So if you're somebody like me who is a heathen and doesn't like to clean guns, you're probably gonna need to keep this gun pretty clean to guarantee the maximum reliability. The only issues that I saw is when I was putting the slide into battery on a fresh magazine, if I didn't drop the slide with authority, I had to hit the back of the slide to get it into battery, but I never had any issues with it chambering rounds when I was firing it. And when I tested the gun, I tested it with cheap range ammo. I usually use my reloads, but with this gun, I went to Academy and bought whatever they had that was the cheapest. So it was like some Remington UMC or something like that. And it didn't have any issues lighting it off whatsoever. Now, as far as what the gun actually comes with, it ships in a cardboard box that is absolutely perfect for recycling. You can recycle it and it's just fantastic. It's gone and you don't have to deal with it. It comes with a trigger lock, which made a lot of lawyers really happy and nobody else. And there was plenty of other stuff in the box that had paperwork with some holster makers who were making holsters for it, uh, the information on the electronic site, and the two 10-round magazines that were provided. So having spent some time with this pistol, I'm very interested in what this thing represents by taking the electronic sights and putting it at a price point that just about anybody can afford it and check it out. The pistol itself actually performs great for a self-defense type pistol. Now, I will have a caveat. The, the caveat being that the pistol is somewhat difficult to zero and it has a double action only trigger, which makes it difficult to group well if you're not a practice shooter. So if you've never zeroed a electronic sight before, it might be worth your time to pay somebody to do it just to save the ammo costs because it is a little bit fiddly. But if you can come up the learning curve, if you learn how to lock your wrist, the pistol performs beautifully, it's very accurate, and it represents a heck of a value. I personally think this gun's gonna perform very well in the civilian market. I think Sky is gonna make other manufacturers respond to their move in this value segment. So this is really exciting to me. So if you've been interested in red dot sights and you just want to kind of check it one out in a low risk sort of way, the pistol and the sight cost less than most electronic sights by themselves. So there's that. And if you've not carried a small gun with an electronic sight before, it's actually really cool because you can shoot it at ranges you typically would associate with large service style pistols. My everyday carry is a Glock 43X with a comp and an RMR. And I can shoot it at 50 and 75 yards, no problem, because I have a dot. The barrel length stops mattering. So you can actually stretch the effective range of the pistol out far beyond what its iron sight brethren would be. And it makes it easier to shoot. So it's a cool gun. I appreciate you guys watching. If you've made it this far, please go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description. Some of those are affiliate links and they can help me out. Or if you like information about electronic sites and dots, maybe consider becoming a supporter over on my Patreon page, which is found in the description as well. But ultimately, I appreciate you guys watching. Leave a comment, ask questions. I enjoy interacting with you guys. But until the next time, I'll catch you guys later. Take care, guys.